and ACC 15, simultaneous publication in the New England Journal of Medicine on the data from Pegasus Timmy 54. And so I figured we, we probably should talk about this a little bit. So I'm with uh, Paul Spittle, who is a vice president of cardiovascular and respiratory for AstraZeneca. This is officially long-term use of Tegralor in patients with myocardial infarction. Now, I confirm this, my, my understanding of the history, so let's talk a little bit about where we are uh, in terms of where we've been. This whole thing started, the, the first was Plato, right? Correct. And that was like the first series. Yeah. And now we're moving on to Parthenon. Remind us about where, how these two are different. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, the, the Plato study looked at post-ACS patients. So it's immediately after a heart attack and then looked at uh, Brolinta, Ticagrelor plus aspirin against Clopidogrel plus aspirin. And it followed patients for 12 months. So it was the initial post-ACS population and treatment out to 12 months. Where Pegasus differs, it takes a different cohort of patients. So it's looking at people who had an event at least 12 months previous and then they're already on aspirin and you add Ticagrelor on top of that and see whether Ticagrelor or plus aspirin can make a, a difference to outcomes. Primary endpoint was cardiovascular death, stroke, and MI. And the great news, uh, I think, for, for all concerned, really, is that both the doses of Ticagrel or studied in this actually hit the primary endpoint. So we did see a significant reduction in the, in the primary endpoint composite. Now, were there any geographic variations that, uh, that caused raised eyebrows or anything in the data that you, yeah. you're looking at going, we need to look at that a little more clear, closely? Yeah. No, the, the, the headlines at the moment, I think um, uh, the, the results are pretty much entirely as expected, but that's still a great thing because you always hope for oh, good yeah. results. Um, and, uh, you know, every time you do a clinical trial, you're always uh, taking a risk because you don't know how it's going to play out. And I think that's one of the brave things about AstraZeneca. When you look at the overall Parthenon program, we're asking in a lot of uh, tough medical questions and seeing how Brilinta stacks up against that. But in terms of the subgroups, whatever way you look at it really, it, it was very, very consistent. There was no heterogeneity in any particular group, whether it be region, gender, whatever you look at, it was very, very consistent. And well. uh, this is for a year? Uh, actually, the, the treatment, the medium treat, median treatment was 33 months. So the minimum ran from around about 17 months, the longest was 46 months. But for most of them, it's around about the three year mark. Okay. Now, in terms of these other Parthenon studies, so what are the other questions that you're looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So, as I say, Plato was post ACS, Pegasus is post MI. Uh, and then, um, probably in around about a year's time, we should have the readout of Socrates. Socrates looks at patients who are previous stroke or TIA. We then move, move on to Euclid, which is a study of Brillinta uh, in peripheral arterial disease. And then finally we get to Themis, which looks at patients who have type 2 diabetes. So the entirety of that is called the Parthenon Clinical Trials Program. It's actually the largest clinical trials program that AstraZeneca have ever conducted, in total in excess of 80,000 patients. Pegasus itself, by the way, is the largest single trial that we've ever had. That was over 21,000 patients. I love we're up to Timmy 54 now. Timmy 54, that's the one. I think it's great. And there is a lot of information from ACC 15, as you can imagine. Please go to acc.org, where uh, you can see all of the different coverage from this meeting. And you can also read about it in the special supplement to Cardio Source World News, where I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.